uh, open this meeting. This is the Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting for July 6, 2022. The time is uh, 5 p.m. This meeting is remote. Uh, meetings held normally at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act, extending certain provisions of COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of its March 20, 2022, or 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, uh, Section 20. Um, remote meeting connections are listed on the agenda, which can be found on the Town of Deerfield website. A dial-in number toll-free is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need the passcode, it's 570012. There is a link to this Zoom meeting on that same agenda. So um, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, and I just want to make a little uh, announcement. We have some, um, some kind of pop up meetings that are out of regular um, schedule. But so, so this has to do with public comment on our on our um, July 8th meetings. So we'll talk about that a little bit further about our July 8th meeting. But I just want to read this. Please note that public comment will not be taken during the select board meetings posted for July 8th, 2022, as me these meetings are unique and intended to do specific business with other public officials for special projects. Public comment will be back on the agenda for regular select board meeting on July 13th, 2022. So Thank just a heads up to everybody on that. And then, um, so um, we do have public comment tonight. So if anybody would like to speak on the um, items, discussion items or anything on the agenda, or just want to talk to us at all, please feel free. Welcome everybody. Reverend Denise, I, I don't know, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, unless you want me to wait to speak until that comes up on the agenda about the 8th. Oh, about the eighth. Yes, that's going to be an, an item under anticipated, and I will take your comment on that because okay. we're okay. talking specifically right. about those items uh, and, and that uh, that meeting. And then um, let's see. And then we have um, we have no scheduled hearings, appearances, uh, any board of health health agent items to report at the moment. I just want to update that Cindy Majewski was first day today. Great. Okay, so that's, that's pretty exciting. I yes. think it meant a lot of people. And that's good. And she's going to be uh, utilizing the office here, correct? I mean, obviously, yes. she's going to be yes. Until, people at the center yeah. and yeah. set up consultations in, in private right. here. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't really think it's going to be set hours because she's going to be at the senior center and follow up. Yeah, um, well, when people yeah. want to meet meet uh, yeah. privately they can do right. that because there's no there's no um room at this holy family there correct correct yep we want to give people their privacy for sure um okay so um not minutes tonight so really this is uh we had a, a couple items a placeholder was appointments uh resignations we were going to um appoint a local building inspector while our inspector is away on vacation or any time that they're incapacitated for the um you know, upcoming time. Um, I know Bob's Bob's heading out of town for a couple of weeks for vacation, and um, he is um, Bob Walden. Our, our our building inspector was going to be um, hunting and trying to develop relationships with our surrounding towns to and surrounding inspectors to try and get some coverage, and we'll cover them and kind of long term. But in in the meantime. Um, we were going to appoint uh, Dick as our as our um, uh, you know inspector while he is away. Um, is there a specific term for that, Casey? Was it a just a local building inspector, correct, or is it a it's temporary? local building inspector? Um, I think you could give it the time the term limit that you want. Um, it could be short term while you ask Bob to follow up and make sure he has other options because mm -hmm. if something were to happen. If we don't have other relationships set up, Correct. it's going to be difficult to to provide coverage. Yep. So having multiple options would be a good idea. Right. I, I definitely mentioned to Bob, and I know he is working on trying to develop that relationship so that he could cover and make a cover. But um, I'm not sure if is it is there a specific time frame? I'll open it up to the board to discuss. Is there? What do we want? I mean, to do? 
I, I don't feel like it's any issue to do it for six months or a year because I mean it takes a while I know we did we had Dave Jensen from Montague before he retired yeah um uh, you know that seemed to work really well but you know, it takes a while to develop a relationship because you got to go to that town, you shadow how they do business, how they file, how they collect money, all that kind of stuff. And then we then each board appoints that person so they can actually be work in that town. So right. we're not talking a very I mean, you have to you have to have some time because people yeah. are truly busy, too. It, so um, it takes you know, this is not a short process, really. I understand. I also just don't want to do it for a year because it just kind of like, well, I'm covered, you know, at that point. And, and, and the urgency isn't there. So, right. If we do it for six months, that seems like it would be OK. I mean, till December or the end of the year or something like that. Jim, what you yeah, I think it provides a sort of deadline that right. uh, it's a uh, and I would <clears throat> suggest that <clears throat> I'd make a motion to appoint Dick Kalaszewski as an uh, until the end of uh, 2022. Okay. All right. I'll oh, that second seems, that motion. Yeah, that seems fine to me too. Any um, any other discussion, uh, Casey? Yeah, I ask a clarifying question. Do we want to give it December 31st, 2022? Yes. Oh That's yes, fine. yes, yep. yes. The end of Perfect. yeah. Yep. The end of 2022, December 31st, 2022. Perfect. Um. Oh, any further discussions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'm imagining us at the table and going left to right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We got our rhythm. <laughs> we do. We're getting this down. <laughs> That's good. Um, let's see. Uh, transfers are here. Do we have any transfers or is that for, for next time? Probably? It's kind of a placeholder. If we had anything ready, I wanted yeah. you to be able to do that. Sure. Um, okay. It is on your agenda for next week and Brenda and I will be going over them so that if there are transfers between accounts, you will be presented with them. The finance committee is meeting at the same time the select board's meeting. Right. So they'll be in a different room. Yep. Um, so what will happen is, is it'll sort of be a concurrent thing. Okay. But we haven't, we haven't sat down and decided which accounts we should be working with. Okay. As opposed, understand that we only have forty thousand dollars left in reserve. So there probably right. will be transfers between accounts for both finance committee and the select board to address. Yep. yep. Um, the other thing is um, uh, the three fiftieth last night voted to do the oral history project. So okay. um, we wanted Peter Thomas to come in and um, just to do an explanation to the select board to um, explain the project. And also to just give a general update on the 350th, if um, you could put him on the agenda, um, Casey. Sounds good. It's really exciting. I, I'm I'm th really thrilled we're moving forward with that. Yeah. That would be, um, you know, we wanted to focus on being inclusive and the three, you know, more of the immigration story. And we have, you know, a lot of seniors that we want to capture so I'm, I'm really excited i am and, too it'd be great yep casey what was the funding source for that carolyn um we have thirty nine thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars in our um you know celebration fund. yeah, yeah through the celebration fund and so we decided we voted um ninety nine thousand four hundred and fifty dollars towards um this project and um uh, we're kind of setting the other 30,000 aside for expenses related to the parade. Mm -hmm. And um, we're meeting tonight and then, on that. Sure. Right, right. And then we're also um, the Friends of Deerfield, um, you know, Chris Harris was there last night and they're starting to really make um, good fundraising decisions and get going this month of July. So um, I think we'll probably have an update from them in the fall that will be pretty positive great it feels like it's taken shape yeah it's really it's, exciting actually the and, and we have the jubilee gala scheduled for december 31st 2022 so right. field academy uh, we confirmed that and so hope everyone will be ready to party on new year's i'm looking forward to it is it new black tie 
no no it's, it's well it's we want people to dress up but yeah you know, that's what we call it a jubilee because stan stan adams was really concerned if we just said gala that means yeah. tuxedos and all that i mean you can right, do that but yeah but we want people to come yes and, and as long as Probably. they dress up it doesn't matter right flannel's fine no flannel, no jeans no, no jeans. jeans oh all right <laughs> Um, so uh, I, there was one item in our in, inbox here. It was, uh, um, it was about the, from the town clerk to Casey about the extensions on the you know, meetings and stuff. Do you, do you want really me to read it's it? a mail it's item. It's a true. mail item. Well, it's really just to talk about, you know, we're getting close to July 15th with no extension for these remote meetings. So that's going to be a challenge for all of us. If they do not extend it, we will no longer be able to do this. I know it's BS that they're just not making a decision one way or the other. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's not that hard. No, I mean it's hard to to manage, as we know from our staffs. You know. Yeah, but it's hard now well. because we're scheduling meetings. I got meetings scheduled, and people are like, "Well, can we do remote, or do we have to go back?" May not. Place? Yep, you may not be able to. Well, I mean, is is the piece of mail you're going to read something that that came out of Comerford's office? Is that? It's yeah, a latest it's notification. Yeah, yeah, that's all okay. it is. So, yeah. um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd just like to let the board know that I was somebody reached out to me about the final opening on the conservation commission, and I forwarded mm -hmm. that person to Pete Law, who's the chair. This person is an ecological planner and works for the Connecticut River Conservancy, mm -hmm. been living in Deerfield for five years. But I'll let Pete bring it forward. Um, Sounds good. So, like a nice find. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Gosh, Jim, you've had really good success. Yeah. So, so far, you're doing great. Thank you for all that work. It's hard to wrangle people up to to serve, and it's great you're getting some excellent candidates. So, and and I wanted to ask if um, if anybody had notified David Slade that we strapped him into the ZBA or. Oh, oh sure. Sharp. 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 Sorry, David Slade was a friend of mine who was also a lawyer 30 years ago, <laughs> having a brain uh, seizure. We're working on that, Tim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we're we're close. And um, one final thing, um, David Lawless, who is Kate's husband, um, mm -hmm. is interested in the uh, Community Preservation Committee. Great. Oh, um, great. Apparently, Lily was appointed by Dan Graves already as the moderator appointee um so okay. uh if we if uh if we decide that uh, next meeting mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we think david lawless would make a good member then we could probably use the select board appointee slot right perfect Did, yeah just have him send in an email or something i don't know if he already has but yeah that'd be great. all right i will do that some recommendations or you know I think Casey I think Casey has on our agenda generic appointments so yes we put that does. We could put both people down when we get their letters. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, I guess the next item is the um, items unanticipated. We, we had learned that uh, we'll have a visit from Jim McGovern on Friday. So um, uh, Denise Mason is here to kind of talk about um, what are our, our and, and to work with us on a strategy for our presentation to him about the Deerfield campus and um, why it's such a challenge if we don't get any sewer money. <laughs> in yeah. the so uh, go ahead, Denise. Do you want to sure. give us your ideas? I was going to say persistence proves profitable. And actually, Andrea Leapson got the email from the governance person. I forget her name is Kelly or Kathy or something. And um, so she said, hey, do we want to meet? I said, yeah, of course we do. Yeah. So you know, I'm thinking, I'm, I did reach out to John, to the chief, and he will not be available on Friday. So, you know, but I'm sure that we can give a tour. So, you know, that, that's, that's up to you guys what you want to do. But I thought we could just do the same thing that we did for Mass Works. We already have the scripts. Mm -hmm. and it was sort of down and dirty 15 minutes because I think we've got about 45 minutes <clears throat> Basically yep. do the same thing, you know, show them the timeline, show them the, the <coughs> I already gave Kobe a whole, I thought about this last night, I gave him a whole folder, which mm -hmm. you guys never saw, with photos of the, the actual board, um, photos 
of what else? A couple different photos and, and a few things, but he already has that. So I, I don't think I need to repeat that. So, you know, that's up to you if you agree, if you want to do that. Um, I, I think our scripts were pretty effective. Okay. Um, I, Chris, Chris Larrabee from the recorder wrote a very good article about that. So I think repeating that, hey, Chris, um, you. Uh, repeating that is not a, a, a bad thing. And Chris could repeat basically the, uh, hopefully, if he doesn't mind, the same kind of thing, because we need, as you know, you have to say your message over and over again. Right. But the only thing that I'm concerned about is, um, I mean, we want Jim to influence where the ARPA money goes. We know ARPA money is not coming out here. So if his office can help us get some of it channeled out here, that's wonderful. But I think in addition for the coming budget year, we would really appreciate an earmark for our community senior center. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to just say we need an earmark like, I don't know, randomly. I don't wanna say a double digit number. So if we randomly say 9 million, um, you know, we had originally worked that out, the square footage towards around seven, but I mean, given the building construction costs, I would like to just bump that up. Um, I think that ask was too low. So if we ask for 9 million earmark, it sounds still smaller money, but it it's a three town, you know, senior center. And I have to say, you know, my conversation, I called both Tom Fight and Kevich and Joyce um, Palmer this morning, you know, just telling them that Cindy Majewski was starting and, you know, this is sort of just the same nurse program we've had right along. We just have changing out the person. And um, so anyway, Joyce really said when she visited the congregational church, she thought there was mold issues over there. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't been over there for a couple of months. So I don't know if something's happened since, I mean, Trevor, when was the last it's time you were there? It's always been stuffy. I mean, once you get it aired out, I, I, there's no like mold visible. So it, I don't think we have an issue with that. I think it's stuffy in there. It needs to be aired out. We need, you know, to exchange the air. We need to kind of get some. Well, you know, I told her that we, you know, there is water in the basement and that we, one of the things that we were going to do was, you know, take, try to take care of the basement water, you know, mm -hmm. seal the basement off from a, um, you know, insulation kind of view. So anyway, whatever we, we just, I think we, we need to focus Jim's, you know, we need to let him know what we need is an earmark for like mm -hmm. 9 million. Okay. So Carolyn, so, okay. So we do this, you know, you introduce, you've, everyone has their scripts. Okay. You introduce, I do mine. I hand it over to Trevor, Trevor yeah. hands it over to Tim and then at what point, and then Trevor, you wanted to go into, I do. into I wanted, the sewer. I so do, because, you, because it's so important that, you know, yeah. the issue is he is going to say, as he has said before, we have brought $17 billion to the state. Well, that doesn't do us any good because they stick it into SRF and it's unattainable for it us. us. And it's not even that, you know, maybe the SRF program is available to us. But it's a 20 year note with very minimal forgiveness. It is not, they funded those plants by 90% grants in the 70s when those went in. And, you know, that's the kind of thing we need now. We needed a large year mark for this project so that we could then focus and pay for the sewer all by ourselves. Or with all this infrastructure money that's coming out of the federal government needs to focus on infrastructure. It needs to focus on buildings, municipal buildings, and wastewater. And right now, just giving that money to the state is not working. We are left in Western Mass with zero money from the state after five years of working on this sewer project. Did you hear that, Chris? Scandal. You're supposed to be writing a letter that, writing an article that the Boston Globe is going to pick up on. It's it's a, it is a scandal. It's all oh, that money God. is out out east, but it, it sure will add it to different programs or it'll be SRF. None of it comes here, and even it's if it does, we don't have the capability 
to grab Robert, hold of No, it. it's no different. We're getting the runaround on the MVP program. Mm -hmm. Every time we turn around, oh, the money's in the MVP program. Then you go to the MVP program, they still got only 20 million bucks. Right. And, and they're not doing anything with our sewer. They, Billions. Uh, I know. So, so I'm going to wrangle it back in since you let me talk. So, <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to cut that off. But um, yield the floor. okay. So I think that makes sense. So maybe maybe it would be better if Carolyn introduced. I do my thing. Hand it over to Tim, mm -hmm. and then Tim, you hand it over to Trevor. So Trevor, you can finish it with the sewer, yep. and maybe you can work on that script, add that to the script so it's just not off the cuff, yep. okay? Yep. Write all that down and then we'll open it up for Q&A. And right. do we, we want to do a tour? Sure. I mean, I think we should, we yeah, should have a conversation and go over and see tour. how rotten it is. Yeah. But I also think um, it's important that Trevor add on to the sewer thing that, that we need a specific earmark for the three yes. town senior center community center. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want do you want to add that to a Trevor and then yes. um, okay. know, Luck or Tim? I mean, Tim was very good with working yes. on it last time. <laughs> I, don't well, know if uh, I mean, Trevor's just kind of. I think Trevor's got his ideas about you know um, okay. the need okay. for actual money to be spent on you know actual. the sewer projects that uh, yeah. you know they're a classic infrastructure project and we need grants, not loans. Right. Yeah. Because when we reach our borrowing limit, we're toast. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. So, I mean, we should be getting some money out here. And we got plenty of projects. Mm -hmm. So, um, But I also would like just to mention, um, you know, our CCI has is, is been really popular. And there was reference in the newspaper um, about doing CCI up in Leiden, a Leiden CCI. Mm -hmm. So if I think we should try to help Leiden, you know, with our concept and mm -hmm. show this is a way we can show that this template is already working and it's spreading in the county. And Denise had a really great idea. Well, well Carolyn, I'm, I'm actually going to go to a select board meeting on uh, Monday at nine o'clock. So Catherine, Catherine Demadio, yeah, Catherine Demadio, did I, I emailed her. So we, we talked. So um she invited me to go to the select board meeting and I think, yeah, so, um, but I mean, I'll just talk about that, but <clears throat> I'm not sure who to bring that back to just, you know, you guys as the select board or the whole CCI committee. I mean, I think it would be a great yeah. idea. I already talked to the designer. I know Leiden doesn't have a lot of money, spoke with the designer and she said she's happy to just, you know, put things on for Leiden because she also knows Catherine DiMatteo. She's, yeah, for years. Um, so I was thinking, yeah, we could do a Leiden CCI and hopefully, you know, get another, a, a few other towns. So it would be like CCI Western Massachusetts and have a greater force. Right. Anyway, I thought it was a really good concept and idea. And it was really, this is something that we want to follow up again on Karen Polito. And Tim, did you have any um, updates from Karen? Um, I called and left a phone message and, um, that was a couple of days ago. They say that they will get, you know, the response. It's actually Governor Baker's line. It doesn't even mention Karen Polito. Mm -hmm. um, but they say that someone will get back to you. They imply it's going to be during the day. But um, so my intent is to <laughs> call again tomorrow um, yep. and Thank see you. if I get the same message or uh, maybe if they hear three times, they'll. No, oh, Tim, welcome to being a pain. It's good to be a pain because then they finally come around. <laughs> I wonder if we can monetize that CCI. Is there any way to monetize that? We can still kind of like. Yeah, I know we thought about that. I mean, we're not. It. There, it. I don't trademark think our name it. is terribly unique. And I mean, we can no, trademark it, but why not share? I'm teasing. <laughs> totally I think, teasing. I think we could do a lot with a bottle Only of wine. I already thought about here. that. <laughs> well, I think um, I'm not sure if that, you know, if anyone could just send out that um, or just have something printed off here for the, um, you know, the blurb again. And I'll just I can add add to, you know, some notes that I will I will say at the end just so I have that. I don't know where that script. Denise, is, Denise maybe you can send us our scripts again. 
Yeah, I or, think I, I think I have all of them. I was going to look today, but I, I will yeah. do that and I'll send that to, to all okay. of you. Okay, now do we have do we have a set agenda? Was that agenda draft agenda set out for the DOT meeting? Was that um, um, is that set now, Casey? Or is yes, it's it set and posted. Yeah, okay. what time was that going to be? That was uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on Friday at the town at hall. Three, at the town hall, and we'll and do then, a walkabout. And then McGovern is what time? 3 30. I have 3 30. Is that right, Denise? I, I had 315, but yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here in plenty of time and whenever they get here. Right? 330 to 415. Hey, can I just say something about the DOT? And I think I was talking I talking with you, Casey, about that. Oh, because I, I forget who I was talking about. I think I was talking to you about that. And the issue with Park Street, if the town took that over, and the issue with Pelican coming in and you yes. know, the radius. And I talked about that. Yeah, so I thought about you know coming down 116 and and there's that median strip there. Mm -hmm. If they took that out, there wouldn't be an issue with the turning radius coming straight down North Main right. Street. Right. So that, but that's up to DOT, right? I mean, yep. they, they, it I mean, is up to DOT. It's sort mm -hmm. of a little wimpy strip. Yeah, I mean, they, so. they took the one out at on Pleasant Street, you know, yeah. by, by the schools when they redid five and ten, mm -hmm. and you know it works fine without it. So if they did it, it wouldn't be an issue then for the other right. trucks. Okay. Yeah. So we could talk. Yeah, I definitely want to talk a lot about how we structure that work going on downtown, and then probably have a subsequent meeting with whoever would be the lead for the work on the common and how those crosswalks lay in and Leary Street, Leary Lot, you know, or whatever we're going to call that. Um, so anything else? Right. I, I just, you know, not that this is being broadcast, but just Deerfield summer concerts are happening. July 8th is Chicken Wire. July 15th is 60s Experience. July 22nd is Southern Voice. July 29th is TJ and the Peepers. These are all 6.30 to 8 p.m. Memorial Field, right behind the uh, town hall. So come and enjoy the concerts. Uh, with that, uh, motion to adjourn. I will make that motion. Carolyn. Second to Tim Hilchey. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, yes, aye. Great. Annalise, thank you.